Monks are solitary people who separate themselves from society and commit to spiritual life. Some devote their entire lives to certain crafts and Shaolin Kung Fu and eventually become known as Shaolin Masters after around 15 years. You definitely don't want to mess with them when they get to this stage of their monk life. From extreme strength to needles through glass, here are 20 superpowers monks have in real life. Number 20. Extreme Physical Strength Extreme physical strength is something many of us are capable of having, but certainly not overnight. This is why you should never mess with a Shaolin master, because they've spent several years using impossible training methods to develop extreme physical strength that some of us could only dream of having. Some of these methods include finger punching, where the monks begin poking trees and wood planks to strengthen their fingers. Over time, they can produce hard strikes and end up denting the wood of trees. Once they've developed that super strength, in their fingers, they can pull nails out of wood with their bare hands after driving over a hundred of them into the wood and leaving them to rust. Their feet aren't exempt from strength training either. They kick small rocks with their bare feet daily and work their way up to large stones and boulders. By the time they've spent several months doing this, they have incredibly powerful kicks that could knock over even the most portly of men. When strength training's over, or at least the hard stuff, there's almost nothing they can't do, and they learn about hard work, persistence, patience, and dedication along the way. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 19. Tree Hugging no one becomes a Shaolin master within days or even weeks. Instead, it's a years-long process, with young Shaolin monks beginning tough training at the same age most kids would be attending school for the first time. As we don't have too much exposure to monk training here, people lost their minds when watching videos of young kids training as Kung Fu masters at the Shaolin Temple in Henan, China. Boys as young as six and seven years old look to be in pain while wrapping their bodies around poles and trees. The practice formed as part of a training regime at the Shaolin Temple, and the boys were committed to giving it their all. They even counted as they hung onto the pole, showing the sheer grit and determination in their faces and voices. Their instructor said the tough training was necessary for giving the boys the best possible chance of becoming Shaolin masters. They had been learning Kung Fu at the temple for about a year and began as delicate children who knew very little. By the end of their training, they would be well-disciplined young men that could overcome anything thrown their way. Number 18. Walking on Water Okay, so no one can actually walk on water, but one man got pretty close, and he definitely has a kind of superpower. Shi Li Liang spent nearly a decade using 200 floating planks to teach himself how to walk on water. He was inspired to join the Shaolin monks by kung fu movies of the 1980s. He had seen some amazing moves like flying through the air and flight on the water, and his passion only grew as the years went by so he became a monk and hasn't looked back. She started training daily by running with iron bars on his feet. He then completed a 120 meter or almost 400 foot walk on water using boards for buoyancy. Now he's mastered flight on water and flying through the air in the same way as idols in 1980s kung fu movies did. He could also do a one figure stand, two finger stand, and praying mantis. According to Shi, running or walking on boards on the water is a lot different from running on the ground. You have to use much of your energy balancing and moving forward simultaneously, and you can't stop since there's no support. As far as he and we are aware, she is the only person in China, and maybe the world, who has pulled off this incredible stunt. Number 17. Shaolin Kung Fu Iron Head if you've ever hit your head against something solid, you're probably aware of how painful it is. You likely wouldn't do it intentionally, either. But you would never want to mess with a Shaolin monk or master, because they actually train by hitting their heads against things, meaning they can pretty much use their heads as weapons if they really wanted to. They strike their heads against a wall in what's called hard external training. They must control their breathing, align parts of their bodies, and even tense specific parts as well. Before they start hitting, they wrap their heads in about 10 
thin layers of protective silk, which has a metal sheet contour to fit their heads on top, followed by another two layers of silk. So they aren't exactly hitting skin against a hard surface to begin with. They'll then strike their head against a brick or stone wall while keeping their head and neck in alignment. At this time, they hold their breath for impact and tense the muscles in their neck. With their head, neck, and back in alignment, they'll hit the rear of their head against a wall, then strike the top. They start with very little impact, but as the training progresses, the impact gets more and more severe. And then the metal is removed, so it does end up being skin on a hard surface. As the months go on, they will unwrap layer by layer until the head is bare. Number 16. Throwing Needles Through Glass it's often hard enough piercing a needle through materials like denim, so could you imagine being strong and precise enough to throw one through glass and hit a balloon on the other side? Shaolin monks can do just that. Well, one in particular, Feng Fei. The entire thing was caught on video, and no, there's no Photoshop involved. Feng throws the needle so hard that it pierces the glass, pops the balloon, and is shown in slow motion so you can see it all happening. But it's not actually the needle piercing the balloon. Instead, the shattered glass pieces are forced into it, bursting it instead. After the slow-mo guys videoed the incredible feat in slow motion, they decided to try it themselves. They threw needles at the glass and only managed to put a tiny neck in it. So how did the monks do it? They clearly have superpowers. But there is another explanation. He actually manages to throw the needle with incredible force and at just the right angle to provide the maximum amount of stress on the glass. This force creates tensile pressure on the other side of the glass, and it's glass shards from that side that pop the balloon. But even if there is a reasonable explanation, that's some amazing stuff. Number 15. Iron Crotch Kung Fu Iron Crotch Kung Fu is as terrifying as it sounds. Someone stands at the end of a hanging log that has a steel plate cap on the end. They spread their legs, and the log is swung in the direction of their family jewels. And not just in the direction of their junk, but directly into it. And it's by no means a small log. It generally weighs about 88 pounds and measures six and a half feet long. Supposedly, this practice strengthens both mind and body. Iron Crotch is a type of Tung Bai Chuan Kung Fu that dates back about 300 years in southern China. It has been practiced for centuries in a village called Juntun, which lies just outside Luoyang. Yang, the ancient Chinese capital. As you can imagine, this form of Kung Fu is nowhere near as popular as it used to be. It wasn't all that long ago that about 200 people practiced it, but now there's likely no more than a handful. Although there has to be a reason why some people still practice it. It's supposed to desensitize the most vulnerable parts of your body so that you can defend yourself against an attack to that area that would bring most people to their knees. Number 14. Maintaining Body Temperature if there's one thing about Shaolin masters and monks that blows my mind, it's how they manage to survive and even thrive in incredibly low temperatures that many of us would die in. There's a group of monks in a remote northern Indian Buddhist monastery that can sit in temperatures as low as 40 degrees Fahrenheit or 4 degrees Celsius and be completely okay about it. In fact, they're only lightly dressed and are entirely calm not even so much as shaking. That in itself is impressive, but they take it one step further by wearing wet sheets. These sheets start to steam and within an hour are completely dry. And this is because the Buddhists use a yoga technique called Ji Tummo. This lets them enter a deep meditation state and raises their body heat. Sometimes that increases by as much as 17 degrees in their toes and fingers. After they dry their first lot of sheets, they get new wet ones. All monks must dry at least three sheets over several hours, and the person who dries the most wins. There's no voodoo magic involved though. The aspects of the meditation practice causing the temperature rise are called vase breath and concentrative visualization. They are breathing techniques and mental imagery that help prevent heat loss. Scientists believe our minds have an incredible ability to influence our bodies. Number 13. The Final Test 
Becoming a Shaolin master is something many people aspire to be, but not everyone will become one. If the many years of training don't stop you, then what is known as the final test might. The final test comes after literally thousands of hours of practice involving martial arts and other spiritual practices. If you fail the test, you have to wait three years to take it again. After already spending 15 years to become a master, that's a long time to wait. Part of the test involves a specialty the monk would have taken up when they began their studies. To pass the test with this specialty means they've basically mastered it. There's also a spiritual side to Kung Fu they have to master, which is next to impossible if they haven't managed to find peace in their minds. But that's not all. Becoming a Shaolin master means you must be in tune with all spiritual matters. This means they have to recite passages from any of the approximately 200 mantras. They will then show off their Kung Fu mastery before eventually being given the opportunity to become a Shaolin master if they pass. Number 12. Iron Leg Iron body training is, without a doubt, one of the most challenging forms of training in the world. Shaolin martial arts teacher Shifu Yan Lei even went so far as to say it's mentally tough, physically tough, and sometimes even dangerous. Yet, if you've dedicated your entire life to martial arts, you're probably quite curious about the limits of your mind and body. And iron body training can help you find them. Out of all iron body training types, iron leg would have to be one of the toughest. Iron leg involves learning how to deliver incredibly powerful kicks that hurt your opponent, but not you. To get to that point, you have to work on your stamina and flexibility. The next part involves warming the body up by rubbing tincture into the areas you want to condition. After the tincture is applied, those in iron leg training use a metal brush on their body that has about 108 metal rods on it. It's like a massage brush, but scraping metal rods on my body doesn't sound very relaxing. There's also a form to work on to condition your internal organs and make your bones strong, known as CB Chuan and Qi Gung, to help with circulation after your legs become sore, black and blue. Number 11. Diamond Finger We've already learned that Shaolin masters and monks strengthen their fingers to produce hard strikes and they poke holes in the wood of trees. But there can be so much more involved in what's often described as a diamond finger. Of course, you're made to punch trees with your fingers until you eventually make a hole and even pull out rusted nails. But you're not doing that to have strong fingers for these tasks. The stronger your fingers are, the easier it'll be for you to use a single finger to hurt your opponent. The goal, ultimately, is for you to create a hole in your opponent's chest with your finger and damage their internal organs. Some monks have mastered these skills better than others. For example, a late Shaolin monk called Hal Tank was able to perform a one-finger handstand. Two-finger handstands are common among Buddhists, but one is incredibly rare. Although one student did manage to feature in news headlines in 2015 when he was able to balance into a full inversion all on just one single index finger. Number 10. Endurance. Let's get a show of hands. Who loves long distance running? There might be a few people here and there who don't mind going for a run to start or finish their day, but imagine running a thousand marathons in a thousand days. That's on an entirely different level. There are monks living in the mountains around Kyoto who are aptly named Marathon Monks. According to rumors and reports, they run a thousand marathons in a thousand days to help them reach enlightenment. If they succeed, and many don't, they basically become living saints. The 1,000 day challenge is known as Kaihogyo, and it's not for the faint of heart. In approximately 130 years, under 50 men have succeeded. According to an article in The Guardian, someone knew a monk who had succeeded and ran the marathon in straw sandals. When he finished the challenge, she expected to see his feet looking like those of someone who had been running for a thousand days, but she was pleasantly surprised, she said, when they were clean and smooth. Upon completion of the 1,000 day challenge, the successful monks will go into a darkened room and won't eat, sleep, or drink for nine days. The goal is to be as close to death as possible. At that point, they are given the title of the saintly master of the highest practice, also known as Daigyoman Ajari. Number 9. Iron Bull Technique 
Many monk practices are learned with the intention of no longer being affected by the very things they're doing to themselves. For example, they're hitting the manhood with a log so that when someone does hit them there, it won't hurt. The same general rule applies to the iron bull technique. The more damage they inflict to their own stomachs, the less that can be done to them by other people. Monks in training will start at a very basic level by spending parts of the day and night scratching and scraping at their own stomachs. They use their fingers and palms to do this, but eventually use blades. Over time, the skin hardens, and at this point, they use knives to scrape and strike at their stomach and obliques. When they reach a point where the blades no longer cause pain, they move on to hammers. Wooden hammers are their tool of choice, but they eventually start using iron hammers. Some of the more advanced training methods even involve using a log battering ram weighing hundreds of pounds, driving it into the stomach of a monk. After all that, there's almost no blow to the stomach their bodies and minds can't handle. Number 8. Immortality We all know that immortality is not a thing. Well, at least not yet, or that we're aware of, but something strange happened to a Buddhist monk called Dashi Dorjo Itigalov, and it actually has me questioning what might be possible. Dashi Dorjo died almost a hundred years ago in a region of Siberia called Buryatia. His last will and testament stated that he entered Nirvana but wanted to be exhumed 30 years later. Apparently, he had assumed the lotus position, asked his pupils to pray for him, and went into a deep meditative state. While in this state, he said, visit me and look at my body in 30 years, and in 75 years, take me out of the earth. Then he died. Or did he? Dashi Dorzo is buried in the same position he entered the meditative state in and subsequently died in, and was placed in a cedar cube covered in salt. This instruction was also in his will. But his instructions weren't followed exactly. Locals were fearful of a hurricane, so they exhumed him two years shy of 30 years to pray to him for help. When they opened the box, the area around his heart was warm, his skin still had its elasticity, and his joints were flexible. In 2002, he was exhumed again as requested in his will. Forensic medical examiners said his head was in such excellent condition that one might suspect he was still alive. Number 7. Agility Agility is just as crucial to Shaolin monks in training as flexibility and strength. One of the most effective ways for them to build up agility is by working on the five fundamental kicks. These are side kicks, thrust kicks, organ seeking kicks, whirlwind kicks, and kicking the sky. After kicking the sky, Shaolin monks then learn the rolling away technique to lessen the risk of groin exposure that this final kick presents. The side kick consists of the monk turning his body to kick. The heel, rather than the edge of the foot, is used. Next is the thrust kick, which is also known as the frontal kick. The heel of the foot, rather than the ball, is used in this kick, and it's useful for when an opponent moves in for an attack. If that's not enough to master agility, monks also learn the organ-seeking kick. As the name suggests, you're seeking the organs. It's also called the snap kick, since the kick comes from the knee. Whirlwind kicks are incredibly important as well. While kicking, they have one hand to protect their groin and another protecting their ribs. Finally, kicking the sky. Shaolin Kung Fu rarely involves high kicks, but some situations do call for them, such as someone jumping on you with a knife. To protect their groin, which is vulnerable in this kick, they roll away after performing it. Number 6. High Pain Threshold Many high-ranking monks in Thailand will perform in the streets to promote the Dharma, which is a concept in Buddhism, Hinduism, Sikhism, and other religions. One such performance is known as the Pot of Oil, and it really shines a spotlight on the high pain threshold that many Shaolin monks have. Monks will sit calmly in a large pan of oil with calm expressions. There's a fire burning underneath, with the firewood causing the oil to burn hotter and hotter until it's literally bubbling. You would think the monk is being deep fried, but he's so calm and so not burnt, huh? Uh, this performance is one that people flock from all over to see, and it seems absolutely impossible. As it turns out, the oil isn't all that hot after all. 
It is true that monks have incredibly high pain thresholds, especially with all the training they do, but there's a bit of science involved in the oil pod. Chinese tourists who saw the monk in the oil explained to others what was actually happening. They said you could add about 10 kilograms of vinegar and 15 pounds of weight to a pan, and the oil would start floating towards the middle of the upper layer. As it did, a vacuum layer would form because the liquids all have different densities. If calcium carbonate is added, the oil can be of a high temperature, but the oil pan temperature will stay at about 30 degrees Celsius. Number 5. Zhao Rui Head after learning about Shaolin Kung Fu master Zhao Rui, you'll be hard-pressed to name anyone with more balls of steel than this guy. Zhao is a legend in his hometown of Mianzhu in southwest China. He ran away from home at age 16 to join the Shaolin Temple and had been studying martial arts since his childhood. After completing two years of study, he began Kung Fu training. And going by how he can put a drill to his skull and not get hurt? Yeah, he's definitely at master level. Zhao can literally put an electric drill to his temple and turn it on, but won't injure himself. He can also lie on top of metal spikes, pierce himself with iron spears, cut his own throat with a steel blade, and bend iron bars using only his throat. The unfortunate reality is that practice makes perfect, so Zhao did hurt himself on his way to being at the level he is now. He said it was painful, but he got better and learned from experience. Now he can practice without any problems. Zhao says he believes in making his body tough. While he was nervous when he was young, he has lots of self-confidence, and that much is evident when you see him break stones with his head. Number 4. One Point Meditation our brains can be easily confused in visual tests. If someone was to hold up two images in front of you, you would probably have a hard time focusing on one and not moving your attention from one to the other. But this is something that monks can train their brains to manage quite easily. In visual tests that would generally confuse most of us, monks excelled. Nearly 80 Tibetan monks were given a perceptual rivalry test that had two conflicting images, one with horizontal stripes and one with vertical stripes. Rather than their brains switching back and forth trying to make sense of the images, the monks who were skilled in something called one-point meditation were able to focus on one picture for the entire five-minute experiment. One-point meditation involves focusing your attention on one thought or image. Those who are most skilled in it can slow the switching down or stop it altogether. So when they viewed the two pictures, what they were actually seeing was one picture with one set of dominant bars. Number 3. Drunken Fist Fighting Style while not exactly a superpower, the drunken fist fighting style has been so effective in the boxing ring that pro-American boxer Emmanuel Augustus had 38 victories, 20 of which were knockouts. This fighting style involves bobbing, weaving, and swaying almost in the same way that someone drunk would move. It's a deceptive form of fighting with sudden changes in direction that allows boxers to take their opponents by surprise. It was actually Jackie Chan that popularized the style in his movie Drunken Master, highly recommended. The elderly master was a drunkard, but used his inebriation to his advantage when he was attacked. Mm, spoilers. The origins of it are hard to pinpoint, but it may date back to Shaolin monks of the 18th century. Apparently, Shaolin monks were described as fighting in a style of eight drunken immortals. It supposedly reached the Shaolin Temple around the Tang Dynasty period when monks were given wine for a victory celebration. Wine is forbidden under Buddhist teachings, but it came from the emperor, so they were allowed to drink it. Number 2. Monk Pillar Skill The monk pillar skill is incredible to watch, especially when you see how much leg strength, full body balance, and core strength is involved in it. Monks stand on two pillars, with one foot positioned on each one. They will then sit in a squatting position, and I can actually feel the burn in my thighs just imagining it in my mind. Sometimes they don't just squat, but also hold two bowls filled with water in each of their hands. A third bowl of water will be placed on their head. If they don't use water bowls, they might try oil lamps or something equally as heavy. They must stay in this position for nearly two hours while remaining still. If they move, whatever they have balancing in their hands and on their head will fall all over. Number 1. Prickled by Multiple Spears Something quite interesting about many Shaolin monks is how easily they can do something incredibly painful but feel no pain. 
In this case, one monk can be held up by sharp spears, with a group of other monks being the ones to hold on to those spears. The spears are piercing his body, or at least appear to be, yet he breathes through it and doesn't appear to feel any pain. In some other situations, Shaolin monks are also able to bend spears using only their necks. It's hard to know whether some trickery is involved and whether the spears are as sharp and as painful as they're made out to be. However, when you learn about the lengths monks go to in order to make themselves strong, agile, flexible, and fierce, being able to rest their bodies on spears really isn't out of the question. The fact that they can cut and scrape at their bodies with knives before beating them with hammers is proof that they can do a lot worse to themselves than what the spears can do. When you take a break from society and really work on yourself, you'd be amazed at what you can achieve. Put your mind to something and you may be able to enjoy superpowers like high pain thresholds and walking on water. If you could master any skill, what would you dedicate your life to? Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time.